。お待たせ。大阪のリスニングだ。ほんと、相変わらず遅いわね。あの人、インフルエンザのせいでなんとかかんとか言ってたぜ。コロナとちゃうんかい。ほんで、C 問題の学校は令和4年は、北野、豊中、池田、茨城、春日岡、大手前、市場縄手、清水谷、神津、天王寺、八尾、育野、富田林、千葉、三国が丘、泉、岸和田、大鳥、ビジネスフロンティア、千里、住吉、だったぜ。今年もまた一個減ってもうたかなだな。答えは動画の最後。じゃあスタートだ。ただいまから英語リスニングテストを行います。問題の冊子は表紙の用紙1枚とその内側の回答用紙1枚の合計2枚を重ねて折ってあります。では冊子の上の2枚を重ねたまま真ん中から開きなさい。このページが英語リスニングテストの回答用紙です。答えはすべてこの回答用紙に記入しなさい。それでは左上の受験番号の欄に受験番号を記入しなさい問題はパート A からパート C までありまで回答用紙の下にある表紙の内側にパート C で読む英文とメモ欄が印刷されています放送を聞きながらメモを取っても構いませんでは始めます Please look at part A. In this part of the listening test, you will hear five conversations between Jane and Kevin. You will hear each conversation twice. After listening to each conversation twice, you will hear a question. Each question will be read only once, and you must choose one answer. Now begin. Number one Kevin, look at that building. It's very tall. Yes, Jane, it's a famous building. No other building is as tall as that one. Kevin, look at that building. It's very tall. Yes, Jane. It's a famous building. No other building is as tall as that one. Question What does Kevin mean? Number two. Kevin, look at the sky. That cloud looks like an elephant. Wow, you're right, Jane. I want to take a picture. Me too, but I left my camera at home. Kevin, do you have one? No, sorry. I wish I had a camera now. Kevin, look at the sky. That cloud looks like an elephant. Wow, you're right, Jane. I want to take a picture. Me too, but I left my camera at home. Kevin, do you have one? No, sorry. I wish I had a camera now. Question Which is true about Jane and Kevin? Number three Kevin, can you help me? I want to choose a flower for my sister. But there are so many choices, I can't decide. Oh, why are you having trouble, Jane? If you have many choices, you can choose any of them. Well, that's the problem. Having various choices is nice, but it doesn't mean choosing the best one is easy. Kevin, can you help me? I want to choose a flower for my sister, but there are so many choices, I can't decide. Oh, why are you having trouble, Jane? If you have many choices, you can choose any of them. Well, that's the problem. Having various choices is nice, but it doesn't mean choosing the best one is easy. Question What does Jane mean? Number four. Oh, Kevin, why are you here in the classroom now? I thought you have already gone to the meeting. The meeting? What do you mean, Jane? Today, your club has a meeting at the gym, right? I didn't know that. What time will the meeting start? It started five minutes ago. Your coach came here and talked about the meeting to the club members about ten minutes ago. Really? Oh, no. I was in the cafeteria at that time. Wow, so you didn't know about it. In any case, I have to go now. Thank you, Jane.
Oh, Kevin, why are you here in the classroom now? I thought you have already gone to the meeting. The meeting? What do you mean, Jane? Today, your club has a meeting at the gym, right? I didn't know that. What time will the meeting start? It started five minutes ago. Your coach came here and talked about the meeting to the club members about ten minutes ago. Really? Oh, no. I was in the cafeteria at that time. Wow, so you didn't know about it. In any case, I have to go now. Thank you, Jane. Question. Which is true about this conversation? Number five. Jane, I need your help. Are you at home now? Yes, Kevin. What's the matter? Well, I'm at the soccer stadium and practicing before the match will start in 15 minutes. But I can't find my soccer uniform. Can you go and look around my room? Of course, Kevin. Please wait. OK, I'm in your room now. I guess I put my uniform inside the box by the door. Please open it. No, there is no uniform here. Any other places? Oh, around the table in the kitchen. When I took my lunchbox there, I had the uniform with me. Around the table? No, it's not here. Kevin, I think you are a little excited now. How about looking inside your bag once again? OK. Wow, sorry, you are right. It's here under the lunchbox. I knew it. Please relax, Kevin. Now you are ready. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Please try your best. I'll go and watch your match soon. Jane, I need your help. Are you at home now? Yes, Kevin. What's the matter? Well, I'm at the soccer stadium and practicing before the match will start in 15 minutes. But I can't find my soccer uniform. Can you go and look around my room? Of course, Kevin. Please wait. OK, I'm in your room now. I guess I put my uniform inside the box by the door. Please open it. No, there is no uniform here. Any other places? Oh, around the table in the kitchen. When I took my lunchbox there, I had the uniform with me. Around the table? No, it's not here. Kevin, I think you are a little excited now. How about looking inside your bag once again? OK. Wow, sorry, you are right. It's here under the lunchbox. I knew it. Please relax, Kevin. Now you are ready. Yes, thank you very much. You're welcome. Please try your best. I'll go and watch your match soon. Question. Which is true about this conversation? Please look at Part B. In this part of the listening test, you will use the picture on the test paper and hear a speech. It will be spoken twice. After listening to it twice, you will hear two questions. Each question will be read only once, and you must choose one answer. Now begin. Number 6. How do you remember phone numbers? Usually, you don't need to remember phone numbers because your cell phone remembers them for you. However, it is sometimes necessary to remember numbers, for example, when you don't have a cell phone with you. Today, I'll introduce a way of remembering numbers. It is used in Australia. I hope it will be useful for you. Have you looked at the numbers on a phone carefully? If you do that, you will find something under some of the numbers. Now, look at the picture. The number 1 and 0 have nothing written under the numbers. But the numbers from 2 to 9 have something. For example, the number 2 has A, B, C. The number 3 has D, E, F. And the number 9 has W, X, Y, C. Like this, they are written in order. 
By using this rule, you can call someone without remembering the numbers. You just need to remember a phrase. I'll tell you one example. Imagine you're now watching TV and a shop wants you to remember its phone number. Then it says, thumb up. Thumb up is written T H U M B U P. In that order, you push thumb up on the phone. Please push T H U M B U P. Then you can call the number 848 six two eight seven now i'll give you a quiz what is the phone number for the shop with the phrase nice cat how do you remember phone numbers usually you don't need to remember phone numbers because your cell phone remembers them for you however it is sometimes necessary to remember numbers, for example, when you don't have a cell phone with you. Today, I'll introduce a way of remembering numbers. It is used in Australia. I hope it will be useful for you. Have you looked at the numbers on a phone carefully? If you do that, you will find something under some of the numbers. Now, look at the picture. The number 1 and 0 have nothing written under the numbers, but the numbers from 2 to 9 have something. For example, the number 2 has A, B, C. The number 3 has D, E, F. And the number 9 has W, X, Y, C. Like this, they are written in order. By using this rule, you can call someone without remembering the numbers. You just need to remember a phrase. I'll tell you one example. Imagine you're now watching TV and a shop wants you to remember its phone number. Then it says, thumb up. Thumb up is written T H U M B U P. In that order, you push thumb up on the phone. Please push T H U M B U P. Then you can call the number 848 6287. Now I'll give you a quiz. What is the phone number for the shop with the phrase, nice cat? Question 1. Which is true about this speech? Question 2. Which is the correct number for nice cat? Please look at the test paper of Part C. First, please read the passage about the system in a local area. You have half a minute. Now, begin to read. Stop reading. Now you are going to hear the conversation between Ken and Beth. They are talking about the system in a local area. You will hear their conversation and the question about it twice. You can take notes about the things they say about the system in a local area on the test paper when you are listening. Now, listen to the conversation. Hi, Beth. Did you read the passage about the system? Yes, I did, Ken. I'm very interested in the system. What do you think about it? I think the system is good for various people. Various people? Please tell me more. Okay. 
The system is good for both people who buy the food and people who produce the food. People who buy the food can get the food at low prices. Oh, I see. That sounds good. How about people who produce the food? They can sell the food soon after they take the food. Nice. You mean they can sell the food in the local area without carrying the food to other areas, right? Yes, that's right. And this good point brings another good point. What is it? I think this system uses less energy. Energy? Well, people don't need to carry the food to far places in this system. When people carry the food to far places, they usually use a car. The car needs a lot of energy. But if they can sell the food in the local area, they need less energy. So I think the system is also good for the environment. I think it's nice to use less energy. You've talked about two good points of this system. Are there any good points for other people? Yes, I think the system helps children learn about their local food. How does it help them? School lunch is a good chance for students. They can learn how the food is grown in the local area. Oh, yes. You mean students can learn about the local food by eating the food at school? That's right. The system will let the students become interested in the food they eat. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Now I understand that the system is helpful for many people. Question. What does Ken think about the system? Explain his opinions about it in English. Hi, Beth. Did you read the passage about the system? Yes, I did, Ken. I'm very interested in the system. What do you think about it? I think the system is good for various people. Various people? Please tell me more. Okay. The system is good for both people who buy the food and people who produce the food. People who buy the food can get the food at low prices. Oh, I see. That sounds good. How about people who produce the food? They can sell the food soon after they take the food. Nice. You mean they can sell the food in the local area without carrying the food to other areas, right? Yes, that's right. And this good point brings another good point. What is it? I think this system uses less energy. Energy? Well, people don't need to carry the food to far places in this system. When people carry the food to far places, they usually use a car. The car needs a lot of energy. But if they can sell the food in the local area, they need less energy. So I think the system is also good for the environment. I think it's nice to use less energy. You've talked about two good points of this system. Are there any good points for other people? Yes, I think the system helps children learn about their local food. How does it help them? School lunch is a good chance for students. They can learn how the food is grown in the local area. Oh, yes. You mean students can learn about the local food by eating the food at school. That's right. The system will let the students become interested in the food they eat. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Now I understand that the system is helpful for many people. Question. What does Ken think about the system? Explain his opinions about it in English. You have six minutes to write. Now begin. ま、ネーム。パート